Oh yeah, we on. Tecate is the beer of choice tonight. Let's get it. What's going on, beautiful people? I am the Grand Master, but I also go by D-Ray, and I am your coach of the LA Guerrilla Tactics, and this is going to be an epic week two bout against Zombie and his Worcester, War, Worcester Tornadus. This is the team builder, guys, the team builder for week number two. I am super excited for this one. Uh, Zombie is a really good friend of mine, and I've been looking forward to this all week. This is going to be us explaining why we brought what we brought, all the sets, IVs, EVs, all that fun jazz. If you're excited for this, make sure you icicle crash. Make sure you icicle crash that thumbs up button. And if you're new, subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Hit the bell button so you guys get notified every single time I post a new video. With all that out the way, let's just get right into the team builder. So, on your screen you're gonna see our beautiful mascot looking nice and shiny. But below him, you're gonna see our opponent's team. So first up, Zombie has got a Corviknight, very, very, very threatening Pokemon. It can be very versatile. It can be very bulky, very offensive. Um, we never know, but Corviknight is an absolute threat. 100% he brings that. He's got Rotom Wash, very, very threatening Pokemon. It's gonna be able to cover the weaknesses of Corviknight, being resistant to electric and to fire. <coughs> Excuse me. So I do believe that he does bring Rotom Wash as well. Very good pivot Pokemon, and that could also be spec set, bulky set, you never know. He's got a Mamoswine, very, 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 very threatening ice and ground type Pokemon. Uh, very little on my team, resists its dual stab, so that's going to be, you know, something. He's got a Whimsicott, very fast grass and fairy type Pokemon with the ability Prankster. Very good support uh, with Taunt, Encore, Sub. Tailwind, things of that nature. So, I think he does bring that as well. But, Whimsicott, very threatening fairy type Pokemon. He does have a Chandelure, his Ghost and Fire type. Very, 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 very strong special wall breaker. This thing has the thing of 140 special attack stat. That thing is massive. So, very good Pokemon. He's got the Duck. Second week, different league that we face the Duck. Sir Fetched, very, very, very hard hitting physical wall breaker. Fighting type Pokemon with the scrappy ability. This Pokemon um, does not care if you're a ghost type, so uh, very hard hitting. Sir Fetched. Um, he's also got an Ore Beetle. Pretty good support. Very bulky Pokemon. Lots of uh, weaknesses, but because of its bulk, doesn't really care about it. Very threatening weakness policy sweeper, so I do have to keep that in mind. Uh, though I don't think that he brings it. He's got a Volibee. Uh, that's his dark type, so that's something to keep in mind. Volibi is a baby Pokemon that runs Eviolite, gets pretty bulky once it does. Uh, Defog, Foul Play, Roost, uh, Shenanigans, but typically it wants to run Eviolite, not like its counterpart or its evolution Mandibuzz that it can run Heavy Duty Boots, so I don't think that it comes this week. He's got a Gigalith to set up the sand. Why? I don't really know, but that's his, uh, his rock type Pokemon. Very bulky on the special side because it is a pure rock type. And it does get a boost from the sand. And he's got a War Turtle. Uh, could be a threat, to be honest with you. Uh, Shell Smash War Turtle is something to keep in mind. So, I do think that it's a possibility, but it may not come this week. You'll notice that the six on the left have been separated from the four on the right because the six on the left are the Pokemon that I do think he's going to bring. I think it brings Corviknight, Rotom, Mamoswine. Uh, I think he brings the Whimsicott, Chandelure, and the Surfetched. Things that could be swapped out. I could see him bringing um, Or Beetle instead of Surfetched. That could be something that he does. But we'll see. We'll see. The Surfetched to bring is going to be iffy. Give and take. We'll see. But he does love his Surfetched. Every time he plays me, he typically brings a Surfetched. Zombie is a really good friend of mine. Great human being. Love the guy to death. He's one of the commissioners, co commissioners of the NCP. So we've got our work cut out for us this week, guys. So the first Pokemon that we're going to bring to this matchup is going to be D's Nuts. Let me actually pull up the. Um, the sets for you guys so that way I'm able to explain it just a little bit more in depth. Alright, so D's nuts. So we've got leftovers on this guy. We are running the Iron Fist ability, obviously with double iron bash, thunder punch, rock tomb, and protect. So the idea behind this is to be able to thunder punch the Corviknight on specific occasions. That could be pretty clutch. Um, 
the rock tomb is there in case he does decide to switch in Rotom so I can bring down its speed and if it's a fully defensive invested Rotom which I think is what's gonna come like max defense max HP then a minus one speed Rotom does not outspeed Melmetal with the spread that we have and I can double iron bash it to death that's the idea behind the set there so we're running 252 in attack 4 in HP 108 in speed def, 140 in speed with the adamant nature. So we have a good amount of speed on this guy. This is to outspeed that Rotom at minus one. So if we can double iron bash, flinch that thing to death, that's one less threat for Melmetal to be able to double iron bash the rest of his team. So that's the idea behind this set. Hopefully that it does work. Next one that we have is gonna be Kessel Mode. We've got the Raichu. Raichu's running Expert Belt this week. And this week he has got Thunderbolt, Psychic, Volt Switch, and Grass Knot. The EV spreads, we have 44 in defense, 252 in special attack, 212 in speed running the modest nature. So the idea behind this is to clean late game or to poke some holes because Raichu does have super effective coverage on the vast majority of his team. Grass Knot is there to one shot his Mamoswine. If it's a max speed, Jolly or Adamant, with no bulk investment, it does one shot with Grass Knot. Volt Switch is there for Pivot. I put on um, Expert Belt instead of Life Orb, so that way I don't have to get too much chip from Volt Switching around. Um, because the scenario is, if he stops my Volt Switching with his Mamoswine, then I can kill it with one hit with Grass Knot the following turn. Psychic is there for Sir Fetched. Thunderbolt is there for the rest of the team, specifically more for Corviknight. But Raichu is going to be a big win con for us this week, so I'm really excited to have Raichu on the team. It's going to make his debut. So. Shout out to Kesso Mode. Next mod on the squad we do have is JJ's fave. So Mantine because John Jr. loves himself some Mantine. So Mantine is running the heavy duty boots this week because flying type and rocks. Water absorb ability just in case I can. So if I have to switch in to a hydro pump, I can. I can also take a very, very bulky Rotom Thunderbolt. Even though it's four times super effective. I don't necessarily want to do that. But this is the idea behind Water Absorb. And if he's got water coverage, you know, on anything else he decides to bring. Specifically, if he brings War Turtle, this thing will shut it down. So that's the idea behind having Water Absorb. We do have Scald, Air Slash, Roost, and Defog. Defog is there for getting rid of hazards, obviously. Roost is there for longevity. Air Slash is there to hit Sir Fetched and to hit um, Whimsicott. And Scald is there for Mamoswine and for Corviknight and for Chandelure. This thing is specifically here to wall Chandelure 100%. Even a, gra even a Specs Energy Ball does no more than half. So hopefully I can dent it a little bit with some Scald damage. Um, but this thing is typically here to switch into Chandelure every single time. The Heavy Duty Boots are there for uh, longevity, right? Um, Knockoff is going to be a thing. I want to kind of keep the heavy duty boots as long as humanly possible and that way I can just get rid of hazards. I don't want to deal with hazards on my side of the field. So that's the idea behind, you know, JJ's favorite Pokemon. Next mod that we have is Red Eyes making his debut is our Haxorus. And Haxorus is running Dragon Claw, Earthquake, Close Combat, First Impression with the Mold Breaker ability and Life Orb. So. The Mold Breaker is there for us to be able to hit Earthquakes on the Rotom. If I absolutely get that opportunity, I will take it. First impression, one shots the Whimsicott, depending on the spread. If it's bulky, it doesn't. If it has no bulk investment, it does one shot the Whimsicott. That could be pretty clutch. Close Combat is there for um, Mamoswine. And depending on the situation, I can also get Corviknight if it roosts in front of me. Um, if for whatever reason it's faster, somehow. If I get paralyzed, maybe by a Volt Switch or a Thunder Wave from a Rotom, we can definitely do that. But Close Combat is actually there mostly for for a Mamoswine. Dragon Claw is there for Stab, hits everything on his team, obviously except for Whimsicott. So, making his debut, Red Eyes. Shout out to Joey, Red Eyes Black Dragon. Uh, the next mod that we have is Arya. After making its incredible MVP debut last week, it's coming back for a second Encore. We've got Magic Art ability this week, obviously with the Eevee Light. We are running 252 in HP, 252 defense, 4 in speed death, very standard build, very physically defensive. We have Moonblast, Soft Boil, Stealth Rock, Calm Mind. This one's going to be super, super fun. I want to set up hazards early, get those Rockies up, and then if I get the opportunity, I will Calm Mind up and sweep his rest of his team. 
can't be toxic, can't be burned, won't get any residual damage from any hazards, and soft boil is there for longevity. Calm Mind literally is there to beef myself up and hit everything on this team. Ideally, if I can get the Corviknight out of there, I can start setting up with uh, Clefairy, and Clefairy just wins. It literally just wins. Um, Surfetch could be some kind of a problem, but Surfetch is going to be a problem regardless. I can hit some pretty good damage on it with uh, Moonblast in return, especially after a close combat because it does deplete his defenses once he goes for close combat. I do have to watch out for Poison Jab, that's something to keep in mind, but um, Clefairy hopefully is able to get a late game sweep. Clefairy is going to be the MVP this week. So, I believe that's the entire team. No, we have Summer Rae. Summer Rae making her debut as well. This is going to be our check to Rotom Wash, our switch into Rotom Wash every single time. It's a pretty bulky set. So, Summer Rae is running 252 in HP, 204 in Spideff, 52 in Speed with the Jolly Nature. Uh, the idea behind this is um, I can outspeed a max bulk Rotom, no speed invested. Uh, by one point. So that way I can outspeed the Rotom. Uh, knock it out with Power Whip, because we're running Power Whip. Knock off, you turn and Aromatherapy. Knock off is there for whenever his Mons decide to switch around and get rid of some items. You turn is there for Pivot, obviously. Uh, aromatherapy is very important. Why? Because I know he's going to want to burn Melmetal. With Rotom with Will O Wisp, um, with Will O Wisp from Chandelure, anything like that. So. Uh, aromatherapy is going to be pretty important, or if he wants to go for some toxic shenanigans, that could be something to keep in mind, but um, aromatherapy is going to be important to make sure that the uh, Mel Metal stays healthy and not burnt. Um, power Up is going to be pretty clutch on his entire team, or actually not his entire team, mostly for Rotom and for Mamoswine. Um, it does do some decent damage to the duck, but um, mostly this is here to mainly check Rotom. That's what that's there for. Um, I noticed I got some jitters. <laughs> the game jitters are slowly starting to keep up or creep up. Um, we're about to play Zombie right now. You're going to see the matchup tomorrow. If you guys are excited, like I said, I just go crash that thumbs up button, but that is going to be the team. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys for the matchup tomorrow. Have a great rest of your night, and above all else, be nice. Peace. Yeah.